We're back. All right, let's do the, Let's continue where we were. Uh, we were snoring to find out what snoring does to the breath and what it does to the voice. I, I started off by in the last video by saying, uh, let's see what how breathing affects the voice. The way you breathe affects your voice. It absolutely will change your sound. Uh, it always sounds like you, but it sounds like you talking different ways or having different feelings or different expressions or whatever. Now, if I snore, my throat, jaw, and tongue go completely relaxed. So if I go... If I sing like that, with the lean of the breath as it has happened, the snore sucked it down somewhere, where is it? See, it's right, way down here in my lower back. Now, I'm either going to continue the snore, which would be the singing is inhaling, or slide the tone, uh, slide the, the, the voice back and down, or I simply leave my throat loose and I don't think about anything. <laughs> where is that? <laughs> Where's my staccato uh, point down here in my diaphragm somewhere? Where is that? <laughs> See, I can just, again, everything I do up here, I try to put into the diaphragm and don't let it come back up. So if I go, <laughs> that lean of that breath is right where that staccato was. <laughs> so to get the, the, the correct staccato for your voice and your body, you need to get so that this has nothing to do. I mean nothing. If you lift your soft palate, you get, oh, I'm getting reactions like crazy in my throat. I look for every possible way then to try to get some clarity and metal back in my voice. What if I'd done nothing in the first place? Just snore. There it is. If I sing that way, what do I get then? See? What am I doing? Singing for Celestino? Can I sing that part? I don't know. Maybe if I snore, I could. See? But what if I do Una Fortiva Lagrima on the snore? Una Fortiva Lagrima Negli Spunto So it definitely opens the voice and makes it bigger and you get your megaphone effect like crazy when you snore. So we're going to try to learn to not use the throat, jaw, or tongue as at a snore, and then let the breathing do everything. And uh, George London used to say all the time, he was uh, 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 finally a part of the Gar Garcia training school, so his teacher study with Garcia, and he used to say, nothing moves unless the breathing moves it. So when I go... What moved? Think about it. You look way down at your lower back and go, and you feel like your ribs are moving out like that, and I'm not moving. I'm not expanding them independently. They're moving because I'm inhaling. I never, I never hold my ribs out like that. Yeah, it's like if I do that, you can hear I'm getting reactions in my throat. So I go, All of a sudden, I can sing baritone music. See? Breathe? Well, if I s snore, I get... Now I'm reacting like crazy down there, so why shouldn't I go? And people say, uh, if you ask everybody, what kind of voice do I, what do you think I should sing? And some experienced people. And then you, for each person, you breathe a certain way, each person will suggest a different repertoire. <laughs> it's sort of fun. Then you ask the, you ask the, the voice doctor, you know, the, the, the throat specialist, and you have him look down your throat when you're doing all the thing, and I said, now what did I do on that one? He said, nothing. Can't see anything. So if I'm doing a high note and I snore, I go, the voice passes, and I don't have to do anything. So how do I do that? Isn't that interesting? Just because I took a breath. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, one thing that we ought to do is decide 
first of all, we should say, I think I've already mentioned that before, but you should never leak. Don't leak air. So I go, now I'm going to snore. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do Delmonico's lean right here. Ready? Breathe. In other words, if I do Skipa's little sigh, I do this. Why not? You can sing like that. And which one is really... I hate to use the word again, natural, because I'm not doing anything in my throat with any of them. The only thing that's changing is my breathing. And this is very important. You got to understand the way you breathe is going to affect the way you sound. And a lot of people are going, mm, get your salt pilot up, mm, and go, mm. they're trying to impose some kind of position in the throat. And if it existed at all, it should exist only as a reaction to a breath you take. And it should never be independent of your breathing. That's one of the great rules of the old bel canto school. Nothing moves unless the breath moves it, and uh, everything is a response to the way you breathe. So that you, your throat is shawless and tongueless all the time. So if I'm going to do, uh, if I'm going to use the tissue paper, right, and I go, ba 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 ba. Now I've already shown you those extremes. Though so there's a couple of extremes there that you can use. Uh, I can sing. Uh, Let's say, I say singing is inhaling. I go, ah, 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 ah. See, I continue the, uh, the Miller maneuver. Ah, 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 move, right? Now, let's do sliding back and down. Ah, 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 move, see? If I do the sigh method, ah, Ah, paper doesn't move. If I do the silent side, which drops my breath lower in my abdomen, I get ah, so there's no excuse to ever move the paper. Go through the alphabet every day until you don't move the paper on your consonants either, right? So now let's talk about what percentage of the breath should we use. If I have zero uh, percent to one hundred percent, this is zero. And this is 100. <laughs> what percentage of my breath should I be using when I sing? See? So I'm going like that. Let's say I, I start with uh, whatever, 50%. <laughs> what can I sing with 50%? What about 20%? <laughs> Why isn't that enough? Why do I have to sing 80% or 90%? All those guys that are doing that, including the ladies, the guys and the ladies, who are blowing hard, blowing air, they're all in vocal trouble, you know? You think about it, just listen to the wobbles, to the tremolos, listen to all these things that are going, look at the, the ex frantic expression, or the body movement. All you should, you should be able to stand there and just do nothing and sing. And all you have to do is, uh, is just take a breath, in a way that leaves this free. See, I can lean back like that, relax, and go. Now, completely relax. Put my head in any position I want because this isn't playing a role. See, a lot of people vocalize uh, with their heads down like this. A lot of people deliberately vocalize with their heads back to make sure they don't use the throat. Look at all the videos of the great singer. Look at Gili with his hands in his pockets doing, doing O oh, oh Paradiso with his head like this. Tito, Tito Skiba doing Ma Pari like this. Teresa Stratus doing a back bend, a back bend on a high C in the Tabaro duet on videotape. These great singers can sing in any posture, anytime, anyway, because the process does not happen up here. It happens down in your breathing. See? So if I breathe, then all I have to do, I can throw my head back if I want to. You're singing the serenade if somebody's upstairs. You're going to sing the serenade like this? You know? Yeah. Why not just look up and put the breath somewhere and go, ah, 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 ah. Why not? Ah, 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 ah. Why in the world would I have to put my head down to get a high note? Some singers can't stand up to do orchestra rehearsals. They, they, they can, I mean, they can't sit down and do orchestra. They have to stand up every time they sing. And they can't sit down and sing. What in the world is that? 
See? So we've got, uh, we've got percentage of breath applied. You, you decide how much you want to blow and be careful. Don't overdo. The, the, uh, the, uh, my old teacher, then, uh, Olga Ries, who was a dramatic soprano and sung Aida and all the Tosca and Big Poppers, and she used to say, always use middle power. Don't use more than middle power. So once in a while you can let out one note, maybe 75%, and then sometimes you do some pianissimo notes that are only 10 or 15%. And then, but basically, you stay in your middle power all the time. So, if I'm doing, a, if the other thing is the no change of emission. So, rule number two of the Bell Concert School was supposed to be no change of emission, which means I go, ah, ha, 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 that's wrong. Ah, ha, 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 that's wrong. So, let's go, ah, ha, 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 you're not supposed to be um, up bowing, right? You're supposed to be doing this, not this, see? No, it's and that is one way to get your emission so that it stays even. And how does it affect the voice? What if I go, ah, 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 and I go, ah, 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 what's the difference in the color? Any difference? It has a lot to do with the way I breathed in originally as to what color. What if I breathe uh, a very famous singer, Joan Sutherland, in a master class, and they ask her, how do, how do you breathe? And she said, well, I don't know if I shall say this in, 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 in public or not, but I breathe up my rectum. No. If I breathe, that's a chakra in yoga. That's the tip of the tailbone down there. So if I breathe like that, I get... And I maintain my down bow. Then I've got the color of the voice that I get when I breathe on my, on my tip of my tailbone. Or up there, up my tip of my tailbone. And then I keep everything legato and I do nothing in my throat. I hope this breathing lecture, uh, it makes sense to people because it's sort of, it's hard, hard to believe, but you do have a voice, you do have talent, or really all you should have to, you're a wind instrument, all you should have to do is breathe, see? So, uh, I, and let's see, let's carry on here a little bit. Let's try, uh, um, what's a good one? The static diaphragm is a good one. Now, if I hold my static com diaphragm it completely still and don't let it move out or in and breathe, it forces me to breathe in my back. So the static diaphragm works like crazy. Leonard Warren used it and was a magnificent, incredible, big, biggest baritone voice I ever heard of a true baritone. I've heard of a Heldon baritone. Paul Shuffler had maybe the biggest voice I've heard of one of them. He and Delmonico. And, uh, but they breathe by holding the thing completely still here. So if I don't let it go in, I don't let it go out, and I take a deep breath, it forces me to breathe in my lower back. It makes the back half of your diaphragm go down like that. See, the diaphragm goes this way, then it keeps going, it goes way down like that. I went through, I went through that with a pulmonologist, and, 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 and I said, why in the world would Caruso and Lily Lehman, their books describe pulling the abdomen inward when you're inhaling? He said, well, that's obvious. I said, oh, is it really? <laughs> Not to the singers. He said, no, no, you have to understand, you can double your breath capacity that way. We can always use more breath to sing in phrases, long phrases, but there's another huge effect. That is, the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. If you want to have more color and more volume and more, uh, more uh, overtones in your voice, one of the best ways to do it is to get a bigger drum. And the way to get the biggest drum, we got two drums, we call them lungs, is to get the diaphragm to move down and back. When you do, the lungs can expand down, and, the, and you literally, your lungs literally fill up and get bigger than they do if you don't breathe in your back. If you breathe up in front, it can be very shallow. If I breathe like this, then I get, ah, 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 ah. is that my voice? That's all. See? Ah, 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 right? If I breathe differently and I pull my abdomen in and breathe right, I get, ah, 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 ah. So I'm sort of, sort of doing nothing uh, except breathing. So if I breathe in this way and I get uh, the static diaphragm, how do you get it going? I go, ah, it's not nasal. 
A uh, little boy also used what he called the pre-sneeze. So I hold his seal and go, <laughs> and he sang like that. <laughs> I don't know if I sound baritonal when I do that or not. Should be uh, it'd be a lyric baritone. I'm not sure. A very interesting one, but if I go. <laughs> is down. One of the old rules of singing is to never show your teeth. Caruso talks about his book, said some people have very beautiful teeth and want to show them off, but you should never show your teeth, right? Then you see Franco Corelli and Tibaldi, especially, walking around like this backstage, pulling the lip. Elizabeth Schwarzkopf did it all the time. She called it the elephant's trunk. She said, you got you to pull the, the, the upper lip out and down, and then in, 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 like this, do this, and keep it down. So you go, ah, ah, So pulling the lip down become, uh, can become a whole vocal technique. What's the response called? I said, well, how do you breathe? She said, I don't know. I never thought about that. Never thought about breathing? No. She said, she started with Ivo Goon, a very famous singer. She said, all she taught me was this. That's all I knew, literally, was that. Then I realized I went to her master class and watched her, and she walked around, bent over like this the whole time, saying, this is the elephant trunk. See, you, you bend over, and you let your trunk swing. And I realized... You mean you're breathing in your lower back like that every time you, you want? Oh, yeah, that's what I do at home, she said. So she was breathing in her lower back. Another one was Ezio Pinza, who was, a, who was a professional bicycle racer in Italy and went up and down the mountains on a bicycle. Never had a voice test. They always had tremendous breath and, and, and voice. Everybody said, yeah, nobody can understand where this comes from, right? Well, it turns out when you ride a bicycle racing in the mountains, guess where your, where your bottom is and where your lower back is, and your head is way down here, and you're breathing way up in your lower back all the time. Then I asked Fritz Wunderlich, how do you, well, how do you breathe? How do you breathe? And he said, I just, I don't know, I just sing like everybody else. And he really couldn't tell you anything. Then I found out he was a French horn player his whole life. <laughs> so, so what are you going to do? The idea is that everybody has these voices, uh, uh, has always some, some kind of exaggerated uh, thing they did. I mean, I played tuba and harmonica, you know, a lot when I, all, in, when I was young. And you do a lot of football and I played all kinds of sports. So maybe that's part of it. I did karate and yoga and blah, 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 blah. So that's just my case. But there are other cases where Pavarotti played tennis. So apparently a fanatical tennis player played all the time, they said, right? <laughs> So, uh, you know, you stand when you play tennis. So it, 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 you always hear, hear that, that effect. And then some singers just seem to open their mouths and sing, and when they lose it, they lose it completely and don't know how to find it again, you know? Uh, so we're doing, we've got the, the pre-sneeze, and we've got this, like, this kind of position. You notice that the soft palate goes up and forward, not, up and, not straight up and not up and back. You can sing all of those ways, but the great traditional way in the bel canto era was it went up and forward. Lily Lehman talks about that in her book also. Soft palate should go up and forward. It goes as a reaction, an opposite reaction to the way you breathe when you breathe way down in your tailbone. So I go, there's my reaction. Ah, 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 ah. See, it's not, not in my nose at all. It's sitting way up here in my head, see? So, uh, if I want to breathe in a way that gives me my best sound, who knows what that is? Nobody knows what their best sound is. You know, babies go, ah, ah, ah. is that my best sound? Is that the most natural sound? See, how would I sing that way? I breathe. Ah, ha. Ah, ha, 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 ha. What if I laugh? <laughs> what about that one? Ah, how about cry? See? Benny Minogili, who was taught slide back and down, also used the short version of the Valsalva maneuver. Valsalva is when you exhale against a closed glottis. Remember Muller maneuver? You inhale against a closed glottis. The Valsalva maneuver is when you exhale against a closed glottis. A lot of people use that as a breath control technique for singing. So I go, huh. I stop there. Now I'm going to relax my throat and maintain the reaction I got in my diaphragm when I did that. So you can see that every time I stop my breath, huh. 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 now I relax my throat. Hello, how are you today? But I'm maintaining that, that, that pressure of the breath against my diaphragm. And I can use the Valsalva maneuver. 
I can use the breath stop, as Lily Lemon called it. I can use the breath stop as a placement of the lean of the breath or the point of attachment of the breath. So I go, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. Where is that? If I do the short version of that, I do. I have a couple of choices. One is the miniature cough. Manuel Garcia made a fantastic career as a voice teacher by teaching what he called the miniature cough. So I go, I'm taking the breath behind me, and I'm going, ah, 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 ah. See what I'm doing? A miniature cough, and then I leave it there. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, uh, I can sing that way in time. In van, in van, nascondo, la mia vera tortura. And people use that all the time. You hear these little mini grunts, especially the old recordings. You'll hear Rosa Poncel, you know, suicidio in questi, in questi fieri momenti. And you hear him going, Cutting off is a very common method used by lots of people. Tetrasini used it. Your Caruso using it in his last recordings, and when he was a big dramatic tenor, uh, uh, you can use that and hide it. You can go. Nobody has to hear it. If I go, now when I relax, I'm silent, aren't I? You don't hear me going the whole time. So I just go. Ah. Ah, so I'm stopping the breath here, but I'm not letting you hear it. So I'm going, ah, Gili, Ben and Gili use what they call the sob. The sob is simply the, one of the short versions, like the, like the miniature cough. It's a short version of the Vassal maneuver, which is, ah, 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 fuori tuoi capelli neri. See, I'm using that uh, 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 as a short version of the Valsalva lean. The lean of the breath goes poop, huh, like that. I use it, and uh, my teacher was best friends with Gidi, my, well, I, the one I called my teacher, which was Olga Ritz, because she was the one I stayed with the longest. And she was friends with Gidi, and she said, you know, she couldn't listen to him anymore. She didn't know the opera anymore. He sobbed so much, it, it bothered her. She said she loved him when he sang songs, because he didn't sob as much. But what do I do when I go, huh? What does that do except keep my breath leaned up against my diaphragm the whole time? But I shouldn't have to do that and make it audible. I should just go, ah, if I want to use that method. See? Uh, the the uh, Miller maneuver, this is it. The long version is this one. Ah, it's the one Jerome Hines sang at the Metropolitan Opera using for over 50 years. You'd hear him backstage all the time. We were, I was great friends with, uh, with Jerry Hines. And uh, you'd hear him all the time, did it all the time, do it down, walking down the street. You go, I, sing, uh, I remember singing Verity Requiem with him. And I'm, I'm singing, Jemisco Tom Quam Reus. And I hear next to me something going, uh, What's that? <laughs> you know, I keep saying, you know, <laughs> right, and he did it an entire lifetime. Never had a vocal problem. He's always secure. And this great big heavy bass voice he had it was extra low C bass, a real a real low basso profondo. He had beautiful high G's, a fantastic range. And this <gasps> and Corelli did it, demonstrated a master class. They went crazy. Somebody said, "How do you keep your tongue at the open throat all the time? How do you get? How do you open your throat?" He went. <gasps> so now you understand. <laughs> so. The short version of that is the hiccup. What if I do that? Ah, 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 why not? In la mia vera tortura. Now, you're supposed to do these so they can't hear them. To, you, if you hear the recordings of the old singers from the old days, they, 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 they they that sound didn't carry into the theater. See? So they would do it all the time live. Then when they got to make records, you could hear it on the recording. See? But then when they heard it in the theater, that was the rough. So if you go, huh, it doesn't carry out in the theater. If you get away with it. Just only if you're a microphone, don't do it. But it'd be better to develop the habit of not letting anyone hear what you're doing. So I'm going to do... The miniature cough 
and the hiccup. And listen, this is the way some of these singers practice. You hear this backstage sometimes. Uh, I was in, in the Metropolitan Opera School, the Council Law School, and you'd hear some of these great singers back here doing some of these things. But what, what are they doing? What is that? But anyway, you go, huh, 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 so do you realize that, that, that we, uh, none of these singers walk very far away from the tree? And, and the tree is all about breathing, 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 breathing. All this been is to lift the soft palate and go yang, 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 and all the me, 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 and all that meep, 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 and all of this soft, all of this up, all of this is invented by people who never were singers. The real professional singers who have to walk out every night, especially in the German system where we literally sang these huge operas every night. You can't do all that nonsense. It's crazy. The only thing that will let you sing is what keeps you alive, breathing, and chi. Remember that energy? Remember I said chi? Tai chi, Aikido. That energy and breathing are what keep you alive, and the fact that they keep you alive also will allow you to sing every day, which I do every day. I sing all day every day. I demonstrate constantly. I talk nonstop. But the, the, the voice is dependent on... It, that's one one perspective, one way to look at it. And then I try to hide it so you don't know what I'm doing. See? Then you get into the silent sigh. I'm sighing, I'm going, ah, but I'm dropping it way down past the the voice area. You can use that fine. Ah, but it's somewhat limited to lyric uh, expression, which is fine. It's the kind of voice, very much the kind of voice you have. I showed you the spindle method, Ha 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 see that? Ha 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 I got Oh look and say jelly That's with half of a breath out. I'm half empty. You can also say the glass is half full. So let's say I'm half full, okay? So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a breath, but I'll take a breath like that. I don't fill up completely. I want to make sure that I'm half empty before I attack that note. Ah, ah. Unfortunately, if you work with people, coaches and voice teachers say, don't breathe, don't breathe, you'll end up using a spinto method whether you have the spinto voice or not. And a lot of the voices, the women especially, develop a terrible tremolo when they do that. And a lot of the lower men's voices all develop wobbles. And some of the tenors do because they get, the voice gets too chesty, it gets too much like that. Oh, and they either become totally inaudible because the chest doesn't carry, oh, or uh, they get a big wobble and you can hear them but it sounds terrible. Uh, all right, so we'll stop here and we'll come back and we'll do energy and volume as two ways to produce your tone. And you'll see what I mean. There's a volume method of blowing air, and there's an energy method that sings without blowing in the air. And we will discuss that in the next one. Okay? Bye.